It kind of almost sounds like a broken record for me with the WWE in 2015, but it's yet another network special event coming up this Sunday, and I find myself not all that particularly interested. Now, that's not to say that this show doesn't have potential, that this show can't pleasantly surprise me, or that the show can't be good. It's just a shame that I just feel like I'm always going through the motions. The TV shows are primarily bad, and then we get here to the special events, and there's very little of anything for me to look forward to. Now, there's hope for me here, and there's potential here, and there are possibilities here, but... You know, it just when I look at the WWE setup to the show, it doesn't inspire a whole lot of hope. And frankly, when you look at the card itself, I mean, I understand that some of you don't think the number of matches really matter all that much, even though I do personally think that's a bit ridiculous, in part because if you only have five or six matches on the three-hour show, that means most, if not all, the matches are way too damn long, and all the matches kind of tend to feel the same. I mean, you got to admit, you're... you're coming up on the special event, the pay-per-view, and I understand you have Ryback's injury, so you're not doing the IC title match, but you've got five announced matches for this show. Five of them. And then the pre-show match that we've seen how many times on TV between R-Truth and King Bear. So even the pre-show feels like an extension of Raw because it's the same old shit. How many times have these guys already wrestled each other on Raw and SmackDown? Thank God I don't watch SmackDown, or I haven't seen this match even that many more times. I mean, five matches, you've had five, six weeks to prepare for this show, that's inexcusable, and that is unacceptable. I don't give a damn what anybody says. You could have had seven. You know, nice, happy middle ground there, seven matches. You couldn't find a way to properly announce two. So even if you sit there and say they did have the IC title match, it's still only six. I mean, how ridiculous is it that they did that angle with the NXT ladies on Monday, and there's no diva, at least at the time of this recording, officially booked for a match on this show of any kind. Give divas a chance, just don't give them a freaking payout for the pay-per-view, apparently. And I mean, how can WWE even determine or know who's drawing, what's drawing, if anybody's drawing, if they don't even bother to piece together a full car. This is the crap they were doing a poor job of two, three, four years ago, where they would sit there and go until the last minute of a show, only have four announced matches, and then they decide to throw two or three fillers in there. You, you had all this time. It's not like they had two weeks between Elimination Chamber to the next show. You've had weeks, uh, close to a month and a half to prepare for this, and this is the best you can offer? I mean, and even when you look at the card, you have the tag title match. New Day versus the primetime players. Okay. Okay. Just okay. It's good to see a guy like Titus O'Neil get some shine and get a push, so I'm okay with that. You know, but it, there's there's not a lot of story there. Again, damn it, it. How hard can it be to write a fucking interesting feud for a tag title match? or a tag title division, or just any fucking body. I mean, think about this. You want to talk about what epitomizes the lack of excitement for this show. One of the five actually announced matches on this card is Randy Orton versus Sheamus. Because this is what the people want to see, and this is going to be so good for business, right? I mean, Randy Orton versus Sheamus is one of the five matches on this card. And speaking of matches that also kind of epitomize, you know, just kind of a general sense of malaise I have about this product right now, you got Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt. This should be a money feud. This should be something that could elevate the profile of both individuals. This is something that the WWE should be able to make some money off of. But in no way, shape, or form at any point in time have I thought they've done anything remotely close to good with this story between Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt. At no point in time... Have I been captivated by anything bet happening between Roman Reigns or Bray Wyatt? And nor have I been able to envision what any type of logical endgame here is. Because at this point in time, if Bray Wyatt goes over, well, then what does that mean for Roman Reigns? And if Roman Reigns goes over, what well, most certainly the hell does that mean for a Bray Wyatt? It's kind of like these things that frustrate me with the WWE just because you can go there doesn't mean you always should. Sometimes it's better to save these things and wait for these things, and not just do it to sit there and fucking fill the time. 
Because all the while, I'm looking at a Roman Reigns versus a Bray Wyatt, which is something I, that should me feel like a big match for a SummerSlam. It feels like a two-hour Raw main event being sandwiched into the middle of a network special event. And all the while, where the hell is Dean Ambrose on this show? You know what I mean? And let, let's not kid ourselves here. There's only two things we're really going to give a shit about when it comes to this show. And if we're happy with both of those things that we get, then we're, we're probably going to be okay with this show. And it'll gloss over some of the other things. And sure, they'll probably throw in a filler match or two because they're going to freaking have to. But you've got the, the U.S. title match and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. That's what this show is about. And there's potential. And there are loads of possibilities there. Let's start off with the U.S. title match. You know, while people have been excited, I guess you would say, about what they've been doing with Cesaro lately, you know, they've been excited about what Kevin Owens and John Cena have been doing together, you know, now you come to that critical point, that critical juncture, to where you either need to shit or get off the pot when it comes to Kevin Owens. If anything other than Kevin Owens winning this title happens, then this company is fucking ridiculous. And once again, they will prove to you just how much they don't get it and just how much it is about John Cena and how determined they are to waste everybody's fucking time. Owens has to go over here. He has to win this title. Because if Owens doesn't win this title here, who the fuck is going to beat Cena for the damn title? Because even Owens at least fucking beat Cena clean already. If he can't beat him for the title, who the hell can? Do you want a Cesaro? You know, now, could they have some washy finish where they set up a triple threat or a four-way that throws Rusev and Cesaro into the mix for SummerSlam? Perhaps. Maybe. But we need to have some type of definitive moment here. And the definitive no moment needs to be Kevin Owens beating John Cena clean 1-2-3 in the middle of the fucking ring and winning the United States Championship. So at some point in time, you are going to have to separate Cena from the U.S. title. And again... Based off of momentum, if Owens isn't the one to do it now, who the hell is? And while a lot of you seem to have gotten jollies off of this John Cena United States title open challenge, that shit is running its course. It's just like everything else that happens on the show. Random pointless fucking matches. It's time to shake shit up and do something different. Let's give the belt to Owens, and we'll see what the fuck he can do. You can always come back to Cena winning the damn title. It can't always be about John. It can't always be about John. I don't know what you guys think will happen. I don't even know if it fucking matters. Because even if they have... Here's the fear. Is even if they have Owens win the U.S. title, which is a distinct possibility here, who's to say that they do a good job of booking him as the U.S. champion? Who's to sit there and say that he's not put right into a program where it's not really a program at all with, let's say, somebody like a Cesaro, which would seem to be logical here, and then they're just put in a real filler situation. They're not even given, like, our main event spots and their throwaway matches at pay-per-views or throwaway matches on Raw or SmackDown. Is Owens that established where you're confident they have enough confidence in him to be able to give him a featured spot once he's done working with Cena? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about all that. There's a very distinct chance that he goes to work with Cesaro and the company fucking loses interest, and that's a serious and legitimate concern I have. So hopefully this match will be really good, and hopefully Owens goes over and the WWE manages to not be idiots. And then we get to the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match between Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins, and I think they're kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place here. Because I don't know if they win with either of these guys winning this match. Brock Lesnar winning the title would almost seem too predictable. It would almost seem like a bit of a waste of time because you had him lose it at WrestleMania because Rollins cashed in and pinned Reigns just so that way he could win it right back the first opportunity he had at Battleground. And then again, for a company who's not doing very well in the ratings, Lesnar's not going to work a full-time schedule. What does it really make sense to sit there and have a Brock Lesnar win the title and then he's off of television in another month for three months of time? It would be devastating to the WWE product right now and devastating to the brand. They can't do that. But then you look at Seth Rollins. Now, through no fault of his own, he hasn't been a very good champion. They've booked him poorly. I mean, they've tried to spotlight him, but they put him in bad situations and bad spots. 
So, you know, he's been the champion as the ratings post-WrestleMania have been not good at all. So, for all intents and purposes, he should be dropping the strap here. Probably needs to drop the strap here. But then what does that really mean for Seth Rollins going forward? And how does that really benefit him going forward? And how does that benefit the product going forward? Especially if the belt just goes to Brock Lesnar and the belt's not around for three months. While Rollins hasn't been the best champion, at least he's there. At least he's reliable. At least you can count on him. You know, I mean, the time has come. The, the title change is needed. But then taking it off of Seth Rollins doesn't do a whole lot of good either. I mean, you gave him that spot in that moment at WrestleMania. And if you took the belt off of him now, that's three and a half months you're basically kind of throwing in the towel. You know, it's just, and even if they sit there and had Sheamus cash in, I mean, what the hell are you winning if you have Sheamus cash in? So that way you maybe set up a triple threat at SummerSlam, or maybe it's Brock Lesnar versus Sheamus at SummerSlam, so that way either Sheamus beats Brock Lesnar or manages to hold on and then he's the champion for months, or Brock Lesnar wins and then, like I said, he leaves with the title and he's gone for months. It just... I don't know how they're going to do this finish. I really haven't put a whole lot of thought into it. Maybe a Triple H is going to get involved. You know, maybe this is where they would begin a Seth Rollins babyface turn, and maybe that's something that needs to happen. I don't freaking know. And that's where either where Roman Reigns winning the Money in the Bank would be such a better option than Sheamus winning, even though, again, as I talked about months ago, I thought he was an option for them. And at that moment, I thought he was the best option. You know, as he got closer to Money in the Bank, to me, so many things set up so well for Roman Reigns to win that Money in the Bank brief case, briefcase. Excuse me. And when I look at this main event for Battleground, this match between Lesnar and Rollins, I really wish Roman Reigns was the Money in the Bank holder right now. Because it would set up so many more possibilities for what you could do. Because, again, if you have Sheamus cash in, it just it doesn't seem to really work. You have Rollins retain then people are kind of upset because they want Lesnar to win the championship. But if Lesnar wins the championship, they're kind of upset because what does that mean for Rollins? And then, you know, are you really going to be happy when the world champion is gone from a product that you already don't like for another three months, just like he was, you know, last year? Is that what you really want? So hopefully the WWE figures this out. Lesnar and Rollins is the match that I anticipate that it could be in a good way. And they come up with a good creative finish that works. Is they need a good creative finish that works. Because at this point in time, Lester winning straight up I don't think is a great idea. Rollins winning straight up most certainly isn't a great idea. And somebody like Sheamus cashing in at this particular moment I don't think is a great idea either. I guess we'll find out come Sunday. There's always that foolish hope that the WWE is going to figure it out and the WWE is going to do something right, but I don't know why we have that foolish hope. Because when we have that foolish hope, more often than that, we end up being disappointed. So... You would think we would learn our lessons by now, but hey, for fucking $9.99, what the hell? Let's spend three hours Sunday night watching this, huh?